today's title is the water of beginning, the love for beginning, and the wife of the lamb. So first, a letter three, the Revelation chapter twenty one, verse nine to ten. Revelation chapter twenty one, verse nine to ten. Then one of the seven angels who who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke with me, saying, "Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb." And th- and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Amen. Amen. The world we are sharing today is a guide for your faith journey. So I hope that today's word will serve as an essential nourishment for you. I had been to Jeju Island in Korea uh, for a rest in the New Year. So the Lord pointed to a certain place during the rest and inspired me to visit it. So there is a tourist attraction in Jeju called the Fefoka. It is a terrain where seawater and fresh water meet, and is surrounded by large walls on all sides. I have visited the Fefoka several times before. Uh, but the Holy Spirit especially wanted me to visit the Fefoka during this period, the rest period, saying that Fefoka has a secret. There is some method that I want to give you. And I headed to Fefoka with the uh, expectation of what kind of word of God will be given there. As going to the place, I had a determination to discover the parable of God. Hidden in that place, to discover the secret of God hidden in a place called the faithful God, I had to look at clearly, and I had to look closely and carefully. So I thought, of course, I had to take a boat. I boarded the boat and looked very closely at the dark world and the jade-colored water as faithful God, as if I were a detective. But in fact, I could not find any, any God's word of secret in Fefoka. I didn't feel any particular inspiration, even after looking closely at the historical record about Fefoka, which are customary at tourist attractions. I could not find the secret of God in that place. So since I could not uh, continue to spend the time there. I ate near Fefoka with the uh, uh, believers, our members, and I was a company. And then we drank coffee, and then had to move on to the next itinerary. But I went to back to the Fefoka. I had to remove the will to discover something. Even the Holy Spirit said something. If I have my own will and strength, I cannot do it. So. I must not have the will to discover it. I had to let go of my strength, because I was waiting for word throughout my rest, the journey, and I was confident that I would discover something in that place, and that、uh, there would be a word from God. But this time, instead of taking a boat. I went to a place where I could look down Fefoka at a glance, like the picture. The water was a jade color, the mysterious colors, and the people were enjoying kayaking、uh, very safely within the enclosed log world. So, if they were in the middle of the oceans, amateurs would not have been able to paddle and kayak so safely. But because of This place is very safe, so even the amateur can paddle the kayak and can ride the boat. So surrounding like words and mysterious jade-colored water, and people playing freely and peacefully there. As I watching them,、uh, several words came to my mind. The first was love in First Corinthians chapter thirteen. And the second was the water of the beginning. What is the water of the beginning to us humans? What is the water of the beginning to us humans? 
what is the first water that human encounter? It is the amniotic fluid inside the mother's uterus. Instantly, the lack world surrounding the water looked like a mother's womb. The mistress changed color water there appeared to be amniotic fluid are filling the uterus. And the people safely kayaking there look like a fetus safely protected inside their mother's womb. So for humans, the water of the beginning is the mother's amniotic fluid. The fetus drink this amniotic fluid and is protected by it. Without amniotic fluid, the fetus dies. In the Bible, water symbolizes God's nature. God's nature is the Word. Water represents God's Word, and the Word is the nature of God. The living Word of God from the beginning is like the mother's amniotic fluid surrounding the fetus. We say God is love, right? God is love. The Bible also records that God is love. This is because just as a mother protects the life of a fetus with amniotic fluid, the Word of God, like an amniotic fluid, revives and protects the human spirit and the soul with love. Let us read 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. Amen. As we know, there are so many different types of love. There is a love between husband and wife, a love between friends, a love between lovers, a love between parents and children. But from my experience in my life, the love between parents and children seems to be more special than other types of love. What makes the love between parents and children special is that all love involves the giving and receiving of mutual love. But the love between parents and children begins with the parents one side a sacrifice, and one side the devotions, and one side the love for their children. This form of love in which a woman carries a fetus for 10 months and goes through the pain of childbirth and give birth and breastfeed, cares for and nurtures the baby without sleep is one sign. Also, parents think it is natural for them to make a sacrifice for their children like this. The love of the beginning was not the conjugal love of Adam and Eve, but the love between parents and children with which God formed Adam in his own image. So I believe that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for human, for humanity, was not just about obedience to the Father. I believe that in addition to obedience to the Father, the Son willingly gave up his life on the cross because he thought of humanity as his own children whom he conceived and gave birth to. So the living world of the beginning, the water of the beginning, is God's love. We should think of ourselves as a being in amniotic fluid. We must dwell in this amniotic fluid, in God's love, in God's living world. Jesus Christ is the manifestation of the love of the beginning and the world of the beginning in this world, right? Since God loved this world, He sent His only Son. And His word came to this earth as a human being. It is Jesus Christ. Just as a fetus lives in the amniotic fluid in mother's womb and goes out into the world after 10 months, Christ was sent as a manifestation of the living water of the beginning to this word. For Jesus was a fan to this word to manifest God in the living water, God's love. So he is a living and fluid. 
The amniotic fluid of God is shown to us as a person's form. Let us read John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. First John chapter 4, verse 9. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. Amen. Christ confirmed on the cross that the word of the beginning was God's love for this world. So let us read Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. The motto God gave to our community in 2024 was the love of the beginning. We are like reborn in the love of the beginning, in the amniotic fluid of God. However, when this living word of God from the beginning sometimes comes to us as admonitions and commands, we never feel God is love. God is the judge of a human being. But ironically, God is both the amniotic fluid water and the judge of a human being. That is why we get so confused when we learn about God. But that is a human's limitation. Since the human have a fourth body inherited from the first man Adam, we have been condemned from birth. No matter how hard the convicted human try to learn that God is love, God is love, but they cannot understand the nature of God's amniotic fluid. I witnessed a very sad scene in my vision. In that vision, I faced my true self. I saw my body in prison, wearing a prison uniform with a prisoner number plate on one side of the chest. Our old self is born with a prisoner number plate on one side of our chest, wearing a prison uniform and with the fate of going to prison. However, our destiny changes on the cross of Jesus Christ. Our existence changes. However, because of the cross of Jesus, we die on the cross and we are reborn. Jesus shed water and blood on the cross. We are reborn in that amniotic fluid from the cross. The cross is the place of our rebirth and the mother's womb, mother's womb and mother's loop. We are reborn in the womb of the Holy Spirit and in the amniotic fluid in which the Holy Spirit speaks. And we are given the identity of a new person called Christ. Now, when we are in that womb and in that amniotic fluid, we exist only as a Christ, not as a person going to jail with a prisoner number plate on one side of the chair. Can parents raise their children without even disciplining them? If parents do not admonish, command, and give law to their children, they will grow up unruly like an animal rather than human. And God compared his children to sheep, right? But when I saw really sheep, I laughed and said, why do they look so stupid? And why did God compare his believers to the sheep. It did not look smart. They all look stupid. And some animals have smart looking eyes. But all the sheep, they had stupid looking eyes. Right? <laughs> but I was very grateful because the sheep are ignorant animals that go their own way without a shepherd or fence. When God struck Jesus, all the disciples who had confessed that they loved Jesus, they abandoned Jesus and they ran away. 
because they had the nature of a sheep. Let us read Mark chapter 14, verse 27. Mark chapter 14, verse 27. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, because it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Amen. Amen. Our life actually is over without a shepherd. What we have to do is we have to put down our will and strength and follow our shepherd. The Holy Spirit is our shepherd. The same goes for a spiritual upbringing. The Holy Spirit sometimes speaks extremely harshly and with a great majesty to raise us to become God's loyal priests and rulers who will rule over God's word. When the Holy Spirit nurtured the church, there is a process of discipline. When the sternness of God comes upon us, we totally forget that God is love. And we easily fall into the accusation and condemnation given by the devil. However, condemnation is not from God. What we have to remember is only what God has given to us. Since we were born with a prisoner number plate on one side of our chest and with the fate of a prisoner, we are pitiful bodies with a nature that is drawn first to the law of a sinner. So when God appeared through the world on Mount Sinai, the Israelites, they were so afraid and scared that they could not climb up and come. Before God. Because humans are born as a sinner, they cannot approach God and they are afraid of God. How great was Apostle Paul, right? How many churches did he build while living by the power of the Holy Spirit? But Apostle Paul was a witness of faith who received the Holy Spirit and lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. But even within him, the nature of a prisoner constantly arose and dragged him to the law of a sin and death. So he confessed that he was a wretched man because of this constant spiritual work with his outer shell, the outer shell. When God rebuked and admonished you through a prophet or circumstances, and sometimes when he treats you very harshly, do not forget that you are a beloved a being born in the water of the beginning, the amniotic fluid of God. If God had treated us according to justice, I would have already fallen into the abyss, having been deceived by the devil's trick, and let alone you, the congregation. Maybe no one would believe uh, on earth. And I would never have been able to prophesy the word of God until now if there is only God's justice. If we know well that amniotic fluid, God's love, is the water of the beginning given to us, we can be confident that we will be able to overcome God's test and environmental adversity and problems. So we must stay in God's love, in amniotic blue. People live life according to their interpretation. If you ask, why have I lived like this until now? It is the result of how you have interpreted all environment. But when we are in God's amniotic fluid, we can have a truly complete interpretation. I will give you one tip for fighting the spiritual world. For example, the Holy Spirit points out and rebuke you for doing something wrong. Then, first, your heart becomes depressed, right? And it does not end there. You keep thinking and looking back at what you did. And you think, oh, that's right. That was wrong. I should have been done in this way. But from my experience, such a thought 
and interpretations are all wrong. We cannot have a correct interpretation when our mind is already、uh, atrophied. At that time, we have an interpretation of a sin and death. When the Holy Spirit rebukes us, it is a time when we should not try to do something, but rather just wait. We humans actually are not supposed to think about doing something. We are sheep. Do sheep do anything on their own? When you are rebuked and just think, now is the time to wait. After time passes, light will come. That is when true discernment and enlightenment come. This is the wisdom. So do not think when your mind is depressed and try to interpret the environment. A wise person does not make any decision when his mind is complicated and distracted, and wait、uh, for the light again. Interpretation comes when your mind is very stable, and it is okay not to have an interpretation until a certain stage. We just need to wait by staying in the ordinary flow. Let us read Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-five to thirty-nine. Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-five to thirty-nine. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered, but in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Amen. Amen. So, if you were born again in God's amniotic fluid, what would you have to fear? We can confess these Bible quotations because there is absolutely no fear in love. Those who are reborn in God's amniotic fluid have no fear. Let us read the First John chapter four, verse eighteen. First John chapter four verse eighteen. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. Amen. Amen. Although Jesus came in human flesh, his nature is the living word of God from the beginning. This word is the water of the beginning and the law of the beginning. Also, this water of the beginning is like the amniotic fluid of a mother carrying a fetus. God gave amniotic fluid to this world through Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus came to this world through the childbirth by God the Father. Also, God the Son was crucified on the cross and shed water and blood. This is how God the Son gave birth to the Holy Spirit in this world. Through the cross, when Jesus shed His blood and water, He gave birth to a Holy Spirit to the world. The Holy Spirit given birth by God the Son comes upon the church, and the church, as the Father and the Son did, experience the pain and suffering of a child bearing through the. Holy Spirit. However, the toil and pain of the church's childbearing is a great honor. The member of the church are creatures. They are not being who can conceive the life of God as God the Father and God the Son did. Right? We humans are just creatures with a body that came from the dust. However, with the coming of God the Holy Spirit, whom God the Son gave birth to on the cross, and who testified to the water and blood, the Church, although a created being, 
received the grace of being conceived by the Holy Spirit and giving birth to the life of God. So the churches are divided into bride and prostitute. The church is the helper of Jesus. It's like Eve. Eve is a woman who conceived and gave birth to life. When the church conceived the life of God through the Holy Spirit, it is the bride. But if the church gives birth to the flesh, it is an adultery. Conceiving the life of God and experiencing the toil and pain of childbirth means that the church, a creation on this earth, also participate in God's work. It is a very holy and a sacred thing for the church to become a woman and conceive the life of God. This means that the church will also be elevated to the length of God's glory. What is the Millennial Kingdom? It is a place where people rule the world with Jesus on behalf of God. There, all creatures in the created world will see He, the church, and the bride as God. Belonging to the order of Melchizedek means that because of Jesus, the bride who has become one with Jesus stands as a God's representative. How is it possible? The Holy Spirit made it possible, but the church must have the Holy Spirit. The churches of the end of time who conceive the life of God will become the wife of the Lamb and receive the authority of the Lord of Iron together with the Christ in the Millennial Kingdom. But the church, they must give birth to a life. The Holy Spirit through this and your fluid. In the book of Revelation, it is recorded as a great sign in heaven that a woman symbolizing the church is conceived by the Holy Spirit. This great sign of heaven must happen to this church and must happen to you. You are not simply being who were created to succeed and live well in this world for 100 years and more. But you are the church of God who was chosen to rule as a co king with Jesus and as the image of God to rule. But as we live in this world, our identity continues to become blood. So many people are physically very beautiful have good academic background, and they are better than us. It is difficult to be sure that we are chosen among them to be Jesus Christ. It is not an easy task because humans are weak at what we see. But I hope you have faith. You have chosen to reveal, to represent God's glory on this earth. As a one body of Jesus. Let us read Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. A great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And she was with child, and she cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. Amen. Amen. This sign of the heaven must happen to let us read Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Amen. Amen. God the Father sent God the Son into the world by giving birth, and God the Son also sent God the Holy Spirit into the world by giving birth. God the Holy Spirit never worked alone. He wants to become one body with a person and give birth to life together. Isn't it time for God the Holy Spirit to give birth to life? 
Now the God the Holy Spirit must give birth to life. Because God the Holy Spirit is poured out on a person he chooses a bride. And the Holy Spirit says, Now I need to use your body. So we too must want the Holy Spirit. And we have to know uh, the will of God the Holy Spirit. Now God the Holy Spirit with the blazing eyes is looking for a body to give birth to life together. He's looking for a church. Now through the Holy Spirit, the church as a woman must conceive and give birth to the water of the beginning, the love of the beginning, and the living word of the beginning in the world. This word of God is the life. Let us read John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. Amen. Let us read the Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 15. Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 15. You are a garden spring, a well of fresh water, and streams flowing from Lebanon. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, the word where Jesus Christ rule as a king of a king is expressed as a word where water covers the sea. The sea represents this word. God's water of the beginning will cover the sea. It means the love of the beginning will cover this word. So God's amniotic fluid will cover this sea. So then the world and God can love each other because of this living water, because of this amniotic fluid. Can't there be any condemnation in that? There is no any condemnation. So it is a new Eden. Then where does God's amniotic fluid flow from? Where it come from? It flows out of the temple. The book of Revelation records New Jerusalem as the Lamb's wife. In other words, the New Jerusalem temple is a woman who releases amniotic fluid into the world. Please show us the image from the New Jerusalem, from the temple, the living water comes and flows. This is the amniotic fluid that comes from the wife of the Lamb. So, Although the woman will stand with the children. So the Holy Spirit now wants the bodies of those who will become the wife of the Lamb. Because the temple is the body. Let us read Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 to 26. Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 to 26. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bond woman and one by the free woman. But the son by the bond woman was born according to the flesh, and the son by the free woman through the promise. This is allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants, one proceeding from Mount Sinai, bearing children who are to be slaves. She is Hagar. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother. Amen. Amen. When the church that is a free woman and adorned as a new Jerusalem arrives through the Holy Spirit, it is now the generation of the bride. And this is the work of the Omega, the work of the end time of a Trinity God. This is the work of God the Holy Spirit at the end time. When the generation of bride united with the Holy Spirit arise and release the amniotic fluid of God, the church will be granted the supreme authority by God as the wife of the Lamb of God. 
This is because the church gave birth to life together in the work of the Trinity God. Let us read Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the bride are one man. This means that the Holy Spirit does not work alone. He wants the bride, the bride. What is the difference between a lover and a wife? In the Bible, the body of a married man and woman are considered one body, right? But a lover is also a woman who is loved by a man, but she is not yet one body with a man in the lover state. The crucial difference is that the wife formed a family with a man and conceived children. Likewise, the reason the Bible does not record the church as the lamb's lover, but as the lamb's wife, is that the church clothed in the name of New Jerusalem in the end of time, they must be conceived through the seed of God. 2,000 years ago, the Messiah came in human flesh. The Lord said that in the end of time, virgin would conceive the spirit of the Messiah. This is the harvest of the ministry in which the Holy Spirit speaks to the church and let the church conceive. The harvest of the ministry is not something that human can do. It is the ministry of God the Holy Spirit. The harvest is not a ministry that human can do for God. Right? Many believers, they believe they can do something. The harvest work for God. But actually, the harvest is not a ministry that human can do for God. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to give birth to life in the end of time. So that's why the following message is very important. There is also an important reason why the Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, recorded the New Jerusalem as the wife of the Lamb, not just the lover. This is to emphasize the legal personality of the bride, who have become one with the Lamb of God in the end of time. In Ephesians, the church is likened to a married man and woman. That is why it is a fair that they are one body. Jesus and the church are one body. It is a fair that no one can separate the one body. And if the church married Jesus and gave birth to a son, no force can separate Jesus and the church. So let's say a man has a woman he loves. However, even though they are in love, there is no legal obligation or legal power between a man and a woman to each other. However, once a man falls in love and get married to a woman, now there is a legal bond between the man and woman along with the feeling of love. So like this, in the end of time, if the church simply become the lover of Jesus, they will be blown away by the wind of God. Just it becomes chaff. Tremendous four winds of deception are blowing. This is God's test of the churches on earth. The mark of the Antichrist will become more and more prosperous and powerful. And this test is a very narrow test. It is not a test that anyone can predict, but it is an extremely difficult test. It is a narrow gate because very few people pass through this gate. However, the subject of this question is not the Antichrist, but God. We must remember it. God he is the one who gives 
such a test to the church. For church to pass this test, what is needed to win the win is the legal power, the legal effect of the relationship with Jesus. The church must become a legally bounding wife to Jesus Christ. Because God declared that man cannot separate the one body that God has joined, the church must legally become the wife of Jesus. So that's why I said just loving Jesus is not enough. The church must now have a practical and legal status as the wife of Jesus. Only then can the church have this test. Not through their effort, not through their will, not through their uh, strong faith, but because of this, the legal status as the wife of Jesus, they can pass this. If the church become the wife of Jesus and give birth to fruit, the relationship with Jesus become legally bound. Even four winds cannot touch the legal status of the bride. Then the church passed over God's text. It passed over the text. When the Israelites left Egypt, a wind of blood blew through the land of Egypt in which the firstborn died. That wind did not just blow to the people of Egypt. The full wind blew even on the Israelites, living throughout the land of Egypt. So it was not that the four winds blew avoiding the Israelites. However, God taught them how to overcome the four winds. This deceiving spirit not only worked at the world, but this deceiving spirit will work in the church as well. But God will teach how to overcome this deceiving spirit. However, the Israelites passed the judgment of blood by putting the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of their house as a sign, and by eating the meat of the lamb. So, through this, we can get to know, it is not that we do not have a trial. The test will pass over us. This test is not something we can pass by our will. By applying blood, the wind passed over us. By taking the meat of the lamb, the wind passed over us. If one of the Israelites said, Oh, I am a believer in God. I have always loved God. I have lived a good religious life. God will protect me. And then, and he had not applied the blood of the lamb to the doorpost, ignoring the word of the prophet, would that Israelite have been able to escape the judgment of blood? No. So we should not fall into deep ignorance during the end of time. No matter how you have attended church, right? no matter how much you love God, no matter how much you believe in God, if you cannot listen to the word of the prophet, God's command, you cannot pass over this step. We should not fall into this ignorance and say, I am believer in God. I am an elder. I am a pastor. I am a prophet. God will take care of everything. Do not fall into such ignorance. That title cannot save us. Let us read Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 to 13. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 to 13. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no 
and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Amen. Amen. The testimony of the church must become the blood and meat of the Lamb of God and have a legal effect on the believer. The Lamb gave his flesh and blood to the Lamb's bride. The flesh and blood of the Lamb have the legal force of the Lamb's law. Also, the believers who hear the testimony must make the testimony their goal and overcome the test of the end times by obeying it. Now, the whole world has truly entered the season of Passover. The church needs to prepare for the tribulation. The death of the firstborn means that God cut off the entry into the glory of the spiritual firstborn, the first resurrection, and the pre-tribulation lecture. I'm not talking about the time of the lecture. What I want to say is that the glory of the lecture before the great tribulation is very great. At this time, we must prepare for the lecture before the tribulation. Because the whole world now has entered the future path for so all believers, all believers, even that person is a pastor or elder, all believers must have God's testimony. Since the testimony and the word are ultimately the ticket, will become the mark, people will continue to go around looking for the ticket. Ultimately, the reason Jesus come again is to judge this world, which has been polluted by the spirit of various fallen angels, like in the days of Noah, and to open a new world. We have been called to be Noah's generation, and Noah's generation is very mysterious, because we are a generation that experienced the end at the beginning. If we lose the identity that we have been called to be such a generation, we will be washed away by the polluted fluid poured out by the whole world. When we open the door and go out into the world, as you know, we simply get to sell off our identity. How many things is the world, worldly media putting out? What the world pours out seems much more rational, reliable, technical, and scientific than the Word of God. So at some point, we can forget our identity. However, Jesus does not exercise this authority of judgment alone, but together with his wife, who conceived and gave birth through the Spirit sent in his name. Not all the churches that are visible in the end of times are churches that God accepts. There are so many churches, but God does not accept all the visible churches. A church with the testimony of the bride of the Lamb pouring out God's amniotic fluid is the true temple. In that temple, the believers as virgins also adorn themselves, and the favored virgins also participate in the fifth of life by conceiving and giving birth to the spirit of the Messiah. We all have a natural body, but if we look at us as a spiritual body, here are virgins who conceive the life. So some virgins have given birth or left. So while I was on the raft in Jeju, the Holy Spirit also gave me a message. What I continued to do in Jeju was uh, buy ticket. Whenever I enter a certain place, I need to buy a ticket. A purchased ticket. When I wanted to go to a good tourist attraction or have a fun experience, I always had to pay money and buy a ticket. And on my back from the itinerary, 
the Lord showed me a large letter and that said, Ticket office. Ticket is very important to those believers who live in the end of time. Those in the end of time, there is the spiritual battle. Mark versus Mark. The ticket versus the ticket. Unlike animals and plants, God gave man a created being free will toward the creator. The reason God gave people free will is that people ultimately have to buy a ticket. During my Jesu rest, I went to a ranch to see ship and go flying, the flying. And I bought the tickets. And buying a ticket was a matter of my free will to enter that place. And when we left the ranch, there was a thin park where landmarks from various countries around the world were all made into miniature. So I thought it would be a good experience for the children. So we bought tickets and went in. However, after we bought the ticket, it started to rain. So I thought it was inefficient to experience something like this in such a rainy situation. So even though we bought the ticket, we immediately got a refund and left. The place looked good, so we bought a ticket and went in. But we got a refund and left due to an environmental reason. This is a free will toward the ticket. Even when entering the kingdom of God, we must buy and receive a ticket to enter his kingdom. If we have come this far by the grace of the Holy Spirit, whose responsibility is it now to make a choice with our free will? It is up to us. By grace of God, we have come to until this and come to this far. Now we have to buy the ticket by using our free will. At that time, we must make a choice with the free will. The Holy Spirit administers our lives so that we can buy the ticket for the kingdom of God with our free will. But in the end, the choice is ours. When God commanded Adam and Eve not to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden, their choice was a kind of act of buying a ticket with a free will. Adam and Eve were born in Eden. They were not born outside of Eden, bought a ticket and entered Eden. Right? So they were born in Eden, but as a human being, they must also make a choice out of their own free will about their ticket to the kingdom of God. So God placed the tree of knowledge of good and evil to see if they would buy a ticket to eat. It is not God's choice not to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which stand proudly in the center of the garden. But it is Adam and Eve's choice. It was their choice based on their free will. Through their choice, they had to buy ticket. To put on Jerusalem, we must enter through the twelve gates of New Jerusalem. These gates are the testimony of the Lamb's wife, who become one with Jesus in the end of time. Believers must hear the testimony, purchase the ticket of the word, and register as a spiritual Israel. So our kingship is in this testimony of the Lamb. In the end of time, there will be a war between Mark versus Mark. The work of prostitute disguised as a prophet, preaching the kingdom of God, and making people receive the mark of the beast, by listening to the testimony, it's spread everywhere. Many people, they believe they wouldn't receive the mark of the beast. But actually, many people, they are receiving this mark. 
by listening to the different gospel that have become one with the beast. They already have received the mark of the beast. So in 2024, the whole world will enter the era of a mark in full flesh. The camp of fallen angel will spread the mark of the disguised beast in full flesh. And I pray for Africa. I hope that many believers in Africa awaken to the word of truth, defend the ministry of the beast and prostitutes disguised as a Christ, and enter through the gate of the bride. Not to be deceived by the mark of the prostitute, we must purchase the mark through the testimony of the bride. And by this mark is a choice out of the free will of believers. But anyway, each person is to choose what looks good in their eyes. They will follow. And they will buy the ticket what they look like. That's why God gave a soul the right to choose through free will. Let us read the Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 to 12. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 to 12. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plaques came and spoke with me, saying, Come here. I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb, showed me the holy city Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her brilliance was like a very costly stone, as a stone of crystal clear jasper. It had a great and high wall, with twelve gates, and at the gate twelve angels, and names were written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel. Amen. Amen. So, as you know, there are so many jealous Christians who love the bride, groom, who love the Lamb of God. So, but because of their ignorance, they can be a strange gathering, right? Even the gathering is leading them to the gate of hell. But because of their ignorance, they could be there. But the important thing is the motivation. With which motivation are you listening to this word? In the end, they will follow what they like, right? If they want this earthly glory and the honor and the living well on this earth, they will follow such methods. With a pure motivation toward God the Father, if they are at the strange gathering, the Holy Spirit will lead them from that place and to read the true gospel. But in the end, what I want to tell is they will follow what they want. So, motivation. When the believer is listening to the word of God, the motivation of the believer is very important. With which motivation do you have and are you listening to this method? For your own benefit, or truly for the love toward our true bridegroom. For entering the twelve gate is purchasing a ticket and entering New Jerusalem. So I would like to give you a tip for you to better understand the word of revelation. Because many churches, they do not preach about the revelation to the believers. But many believers, they want to know about the truth about the revelation. But as you know, the revelation is the prophetic word. Right? So, I will give you one tip uh, for you to better understand the word of revelation. When you look at the revelation, chapter 21, verse 9, in verse 9, it appears as if the Lamb's wife rises after the last seventh flag. Can you show us the, again the revelation, chapter 29, verse 9? Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last flag came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So when you read this Bible, it appears as if the Lamb's wife rises 
it's called the last seven flag. When the seven bowl judgment occur, it is the end of the great tribulation. So if you look at the book of Revelation, confined to the concept of time, we interpret it as, oh, after the seven bowl judgment, the bride of the Lamb rides. Right. And likewise, and likewise, in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation, two witnesses appear amid the great tribulation at the end of one of seven. When people see this Bible quotation, they usually interpret it as a follow. They think, oh, in one seven, two witnesses appear from somewhere and start a proper sign. But that is a misinterpretation. God has always worked first behind the scene. When you look at this picture, when something is revealed on the surface, actually God's work has already progressed tremendously behind the scene. As you see, there are tremendous work already has happened. But when the appearance comes out to the outside, there is already a God's great a tremendous work that has done. So when the Holy Spirit showed the wife of the Lamb of God after the seven bull judgment, tremendous work has already taken place. Do you understand? Before the seven bull judgment, he already had prepared a lot. And in the end, he will reveal the wife of the Lamb. So, to fully interpret the book of Revelation, you must understand that when something appears on the surface, God's work has already progressed significantly before that. The New Jerusalem is the free woman above, lifting the yoke of slavery from the people and allowing them to live in a practical reason of a spiritual jubilee. Is the millennium the reign of a jubilee or the era of a slave? The reign of the millennial kingdom is the era of freedom, not of slavery. In Israel, a jubilee was declared every 50 years, and at that time, all those who had been slaves were free from slavery and returned to their homeland regardless of the reason. But when we understand the Jubilee, we understand it in terms of time. But the Jubilee does not symbolize any physical time. It symbolizes the time of the world. The year of the Jubilee is only when it is proclaimed through the word of God. Because God always speaks and acts. Let us read Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10. You shall thus consecrate the fifth year and proclaim, and proclaim a release through the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his own property, and each of you shall return to his family. Amen. Amen. And let us read Galatians chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. Galatians chapter 4, verse 25 to 26. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother. Amen. Amen. There are two Jerusalem. The Jerusalem above is a free woman, and the Jerusalem below is a slave woman. In the millennial kingdom, these two Jerusalems coexist. And the Jubilee does not symbolize a specific physical time. God must give us a season with the authority of a Jubilee in the testimonies that the Holy Spirit gives to the church. The fact that the church testifies to freedom does not mean that the believers become free, but that there must be authority to exercise freedom within that testament. There are so many words and books 
that sounds good in this world. If a pastor take some part from the book and testifies some, the sermon sounds plausible. However, God's actual reign must come in the testimony, and the testimony must have legal enforcement power. Anyone can go to people in prison and say you are free. But taking the prison key, saying you are free, and opening the prison door is not something that everyone can do. Another important thing is that even if what is seen and heard seem to be true, as if it is God's truth, if the world do not have God's rigor executive power, they are not reality but illusion. No matter how much a believer shows his or her will to follow the word of God, he or she cannot enter the kingdom because he or she did not buy the real ticket. I bless you to experience the water of the beginning, the love of the beginning flowing through the bride, and that you to become a temple that flow the water of the beginning, the love of beginning, by processing a ticket. Actually, we all have the nature of a prisoner. Because we were once punished by God, so we have a fear of punishment of God. If we continue to be deceived by this nature on our journey, we will not be able to fulfill God's will. So we obey God and work hard, but there is something we must not forget. Sometimes a problem arises, we make a mistake, and we can fall. Then we feel ashamed, but we should not keep getting caught up in that feeling. God is an amnesty fluid. Let us not be afraid of being punished by God because we were born in God's amnesty fluid, and we are His son. Although we have the flesh. Let us believe that we were born again through the pain of the cross in a nearly food. I hope that we walk in the grace of God, knowing that we are beings who must give birth to life together with the Holy Spirit through the cross. Now is the time for hand to hand combat. Now no one else can fight for you. In your position, you must fight wisely and move forward with God's wisdom. Now, no one else can fight for you. You must fight wisely in your position and move forward with God's wisdom. And so I hope that you control your mind and have peace and become an overcomer by dwelling in the amnesty fluid. And moreover, I hope you become the bride who can flow this amniotic fluid to the world. And I also hope that you continue to speak the word of God and make a disciple.